Chapter 15 Lens It took longer than Scarlet would have liked to finally get a concrete address. The hour was well past midnight at this point, and both her and Primrose were becoming visibly exhausted from the prolonged search and the entire day spent on their hooves. A good night of rest would not at all be unwelcome at this point. However, as the two of them made their way up the street for Lenz's home, sleep was the last thing on Scarlet's mind. After eight years, she was going to see Sharp Lenz again. Eight years without any contact whatsoever. No visits, no chance encounters, not even a letter. How is he going to take it? She wondered. It was hard to tell, really. Eight years was a long time, and a lot can change in that kind of time. Who knew if the stallion she was about to meet was at all as she remembered him? All of those concerns and feelings of anxiety finally came to a head when the home came into sight. It was a modest two-story affair, made of the same materials as everything else in the city. What set it apart from its neighbors was the fact that the lights were on, and a few faintly glowing runes were etched in various places around the property. Proximity wards, she deduced after a moment. She took a deep breath and glanced down at Primrose. <sighs> All right, Protea, this is the place, she said softly. Primrose glanced up at her. However, instead of relief or excitement that Scarlet had suspected, the fool's face only showed concern and worry. She was silent for several seconds before leaning closer. Scar- uh, Sorry, Sapphire, are you okay? You look nervous. She asked in a low whisper, her eyes darting back and forth. Scarlet blinked. I do? She parroted in surprise. Primrose merely nodded. After a few seconds of contemplative silence, Scarlet sighed and reluctantly nodded her head. <sighs> yes, I suppose I am nervous. A little bit. I just haven't seen him since the war. She relented, turning her eyes to the home. It looked far larger than something its size should have, almost towering over her like an imposing tyrant. Fighting back the urge to shudder, Scarlet drew herself up and began her approach. Come on. He has proximity wards up. He'll know we're here. Let's not keep him waiting. Primo stayed close to Scarlet's side, and the other comments she had dying in her throat. Suddenly, as they were coming up to the thick wooden door, a loud crash came from the other side, followed shortly by an exasperated exclamation. Scarlet and Brimrose both leaned back out of reflex to the burst of sound and gave each other questioning looks. And then the door opened, revealing the sole occupant of the house. Scarlet's breath hitched in her throat. He looked just like she remembered him. Standing in the doorway and dusting himself off was a unicorn stallion. He was wearing a simple blue shirt with a green bandana hanging loosely over his shoulders. His fur was a dull brown color, like a fine coating of dust, while his mane and tail were a few shades darker and rather messy. A pair of circular glasses that were balanced perfectly on his nose framed his ocean blue eyes. From this angle, Scarlet caught a brief glimpse of his cutie mark, a magnifying glass with a glowing magic rune reflected in the lens. He stared at her, eyes wide in disbelief and his jaw hanging open. Scarlet wasn't much better, blinking a few times and trying desperately to find her words. Finally, though, it was Lenz who spoke. What? Um, oh, uh, uh, Scarlet? I, uh, um... He babbled quickly, reaching up to rub the back of his head. I, uh, I was not expecting you. It's, uh, it's been a long time. Eight years, Scarlet acknowledged through the lump in her throat. It's been eight years, 
Yeah, it has. Wow, uh, um, uh. Lenza looked around for a second, clearly not sure what to make of this turn of events. Eventually, his eyes settled on Primrose, who was peeking nervously from behind Scarlet. Lenz focused on her and slowly lowered himself down to be at her eye level. Oh. Hello there. Is this your daughter? No! Scarlet immediately shot that notion down before she could stop herself. The volume and sharpness of her denial drew a questioning glance from Lenz. She cleared her throat, composing herself. No, no, she isn't my daughter. I'm just looking after her for now. May we come inside? Lenz stared at her for a few seconds. His glasses slid down his muzzle an inch or two, and that seemed to snap him back to reality. Oh, uh, of course, of course, come on in, make yourselves at home. He invited while backpedaling in and stepping aside. Scarlet let out a sigh of relief before nodding at the filly behind her. You go first. Primrose nodded shakily, then did as she was told, quickly scampering inside. Scarlet hesitated for a moment, taking a long, deep breath and forcing her raging thoughts under control. Then, with her head held high, she too stepped in and closed the door behind her. The room she entered was spacious, but did not come with any seats. All along the walls were a series of framed maps, sketches, certificates, and one or two artistic renditions of what some scholars believed old Equestria looked like in its prime. Between those were bookcases, each one full to bursting with what looked to be a bunch of scrap metal and junk, as well as a lot of books. A simple chandelier dangled from the ceiling, the crystal formation at its core emitting gentle golden light, in stark contrast to the purples from outside. Len stood in the center of it all, looking at her and Primrose with an obvious blend of confusion and excitement. He smiled broadly and stepped closer once the door was closed. It's good to see you again, Scarlet. How have you been? Scarlet winced. I have been through hell and back, and when we leave here, I'm diving straight back in again, she wanted to say. But such an assertion would only invite concern and questions, both of which would be better off evaded. So instead, she offered up a small smile. I'm doing fine, Lenz. Thank you for asking. Well, that's good to hear, Lenz said before looking down at Primrose. He studied her for a second before looking to Scarlet again. So, uh, you gonna introduce us? I'm Primrose, the foal answered before Scarlet could, her voice slow and timid. It was almost as anxious as it had been when Scarlet had first found her in her wine cellar. Primrose, huh? That's a pretty name, Lenz noted before standing upright. So, uh, Scarlet, I'm really glad to see you, believe me, I am, but what are you doing here? Scarlet was quiet for a second, her expression steadily becoming one of apology. I'm sorry, Lenz, but I'm afraid this isn't a social visit. We need you to identify something, and then we need to be on our way. It was like some pony had popped a particularly bright and cheerful balloon. Lenz's whole external demeanor shifted from elated confusion to abject disappointment. What? Really? He asked, as if hoping he had misheard her. Scarlet looked down into the side, unwilling to stare into those eyes. Really? Again, I am sorry. Lenz was quiet for several moments, working his jaw from side to side. His disappointed expression steadily faded away replaced with a neutral look. All right. Uh, what is it you need me to identify? He asked, his voice becoming simple and direct. Scarlet turned to Primrose. Show him. The filly hesitated, glancing back and forth between Scarlet and Lenz with uncertainty. Before long, though, she withdrew the lamp from her saddlebags and held it out to him without a word. 
Lenz's eyes widened, and some of the excitement from before returned. Whoa, let me see that! He chattered, his horn lighting up with blue light and pulling the lamp up to his face. He examined it carefully, squinting and humming to himself. It's heavily warded, Scarlet explained, stepping up to give it another close look herself. That's why we came to you. We were hoping your understanding of such things could tell us more about it. Lenz didn't say anything at first. He got a curious look on his face, and the glow on his horn grew brighter. Before Scarlet had time to stop him, he applied the tip to the lamp and tried to scan it. Well, at least she knew what it looked like from the outside. Lenz spasmed where he stood with a loud exclamation, his entire body lighting up as if struck by a lightning bolt. Scarlet could have sworn that for a fraction of a second she could see his skeleton silhouetted through his body. Then, with his cry tapering off, Lenz dropped the lamp to the floor with a heavy thunk. He stumbled back, a hoof pressed to his head and his eyes wide. Oh, whoa, okay, yeah, heavily warded. I believe you. Whew. Scarlet couldn't help but giggle to herself at the display. She was quick to compose herself and return to his side, though. <laughs> Are you all right? That looked pretty painful. Well, my skull feels like I dropped a train car on it, but otherwise, yeah, I'm fine. He dismissed her with a wave of his huff before focusing on the lamp again, now treating it with far more caution and respect. He lifted it in his magic and gave it another look. Wow. Where did you get this thing? It's been in my family for generations, Primrose said, trotting forward with a little more confidence. It seemed she was taking some comfort in Scarlet's casual candor around the stallion. But... I don't know what it really is. Neither did my mom or dad. We were just supposed to protect it. Lenz nodded slowly, his eyes never leaving the lamp. I see. Where are your parents, anyway? Primrose's ears folded back, her hoof scuffing along the ground. Um... They... Lenz... Scarlet quietly interjected, getting his attention and looking meaningfully into his eyes. Don't. Trust me when I say that is one question you do not want the answer to. Lenz gaped at her for several moments before clearing his throat. <clears throat> right. Sorry. Not my business, I get it. He mumbled dejectedly before looking at the lamp once more. Well, with all the wards this thing has on it, figuring out anything will take me a few days, at least, and I'll need to bust out a few tools. That's fine. The lamp is pretty much indestructible, near as I can tell. Scarlet assured with a nod. All right. I'll get a start on it in the morning, Len said, his smile returning. In the meantime, uh, would you two like to spend the night here? I mean, I have a guest room and plenty of space. Scarlet glanced back at Primrose, a cringe on her face. I appreciate the thought, Lenz, but I think we'd rather use an inn. No, no, I insist. Lenz asserted with a raised tuff and a stern look. No offense, you two, but you look terrible. Like weeks of travel on the road, terrible. You need a good bed, a roof over your heads, and going to an inn will just eat up your bits. I have space, food, and beds. Lens, really? Scarlet went to protest. I must decline. We're already invading your- Scarlet, stop. Len suddenly interrupted her, his eyes boring into hers with such intensity that any further words died in her throat. He stepped closer to her, lowering his voice. Please, just... Just stay here for a while, okay? I haven't seen you in so long, and I really missed you. Can I at least have a chance to catch up? Lens, Scarlet whispered, taking a step back. His eyes kept boring into her, though, making her squirm uncomfortably in place. 
Why did he of all ponies have to be good at looking at her like that? It was so unfair. Eventually, Scarlet sighed in defeat and lowered her head. <sighs> all right. Thank you, Lens. Where is the guest room? Lens's face lit up with a cheerful smile. You're welcome. The guest room is right up the stairs there, the one on the left. My room's right across the hall from it, he directed with a point of his hoof. That said, he lifted the lamp in front of him and gave it another quizzical look. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'll go and get this put away in my workshop, and then maybe I can get you two some food? The food won't be necessary, Scarlet said with a smile, turning for the stairs on the other end of the room. We ate not all that long ago. Feel no need to empty your pantry on our account. Lens took a step after her. You sure? I have some of those big, flat pastries you liked so much. What were they called again? Uh, elephant ears? Scarlet came to a complete stop. She slowly turned to Lens with a twitching eye and a crooked grin. Okay, now that's just cheating. Lens laughed. Around an hour and a batch of elephant ears later, Scarlet and Primrose found themselves stepping into the guest room of Lens's home. It was small and compact, featuring one queen-sized bed, a simple rug, and a lamp on the nightstand that emitted sunset orange light. A few small particulates of dust floated around the light, and in the faint blue shafts of light coming in through the only window in the room that gave a stunning view of the city. Scarlet couldn't help the immense sigh of relief that fled her lungs when she finally dropped her saddlebags to the floor and crumpled onto the bed in a heap. The tension that had built up in her entire body from weeks of sleeping on a basic bedroll bled away like a glacier in a desert as the plush mattress practically swallowed her whole. Primrose wasn't long in following her up, her own saddlebags resting neatly next to Scarlet's. The filly came up to the resting mare's side and settled down next to her. <sighs> we made it, she mumbled, letting herself roll lazily into the crater made by the larger pony's weight. Scarlet nodded into the blankets before lifting her head up. Yes, we did. We're here, she whispered quietly. She rolled over onto her back and stared up at the ceiling her eyes going unfocused. They had finally made it to Shimmervale. They had finally found Lens, and hopefully he could give them the answers they were looking for. Hopefully, they could finally learn something about that blasted lamp and just why Silent was trying to kill Primrose over it. With any luck, this whole situation would start to make a lot more sense, and she could finally know what she had uprooted her entire life for. Sadly, her good mood could not last. Scarlet's relaxed expression gradually began to tense up as a question wandered into her mind. What were they going to do now? If Lens found any answers from that lamp, they could probably set their next destination accordingly. But if he couldn't, or if something happened that forced them to leave prematurely, then what were they supposed to do? They were both wanted fugitives, after all. There was not a place in all of New Equestria they could go where they would be safe from Silent and his Nightblades for long. Scarlet? Primrose's voice cut through the silence, drawing her attention. The filly had sat up on her haunches and was staring at her in concern. What are you thinking about? Scarlet was quiet for a few seconds before looking up at the ceiling again. <sighs> I'm just thinking about where we should go next, Primrose. When Lens is done with your lamp, I mean. She answered honestly. After a moment, she sat up herself and gingerly pulled her cloak up and off of her head. She folded the cloth neatly under the metal collar and set it down on the nightstand by the lamp. I've been so focused on getting us here and getting some answers that I haven't given much thought to what we were to do after. 
Primrose hummed, leaning against Scarlet's side. Well, Psylon's gonna find us eventually if we stay put, she pointed out, shuddering at the name. <laughs> so maybe we can just run? Just run. <laughs> Scarlet echoed with a short, disbelieving laugh. And where would we run to, Prim? How long would we run for? I don't know. Running's all I've ever really been able to do for the last five years. Primrose mumbled, closing her eyes. I never think about where I'm going or who I'm going to meet. I just go and hope. Scarlet sighed and draped a huff over Primrose's shoulders. Well, maybe that's worked for you so far. But you said yourself that every time Silent has caught up with you, he's gotten closer to killing you and taking your lamp. If you add me to the mix, he will catch us far more frequently and I am not a match for him in battle. Primrose shuddered, pressing herself up to Scarlet's side as close as she could. <laughs> you really think he'll kill you? You're his friend. Scarlet hesitated, then nodded. Yes. He was about to kill me in the alley when you intervened. We may have been friends in the war, but if there is one thing he cares about more than his loved ones, it is his job. He won't hesitate to cut me down if it is his duty. Primrose was quiet for several seconds, her head lowering. After a minute, she shifted and glanced up at Scarlet again. And what about Lens? He's your friend, too. If he knew what was going on, if it was his duty, would he kill you, too? Scarlet leaned away from the question, appalled. What? No, heavens no! I know Lens. He hates violence just as much as I do, and... She hesitated, the words catching in her throat. She mouthed like a fish, trying to find the right way to say it before sighing and letting the words tumble out in a quiet whisper. And... And I know he cares about me far, far too deeply to ever do something like that. Primrose tilted her head to the side, her muzzle twisting with thought. Wait... Are you two in love or something? She asked quietly. Scarlet's heart skipped a beat. She gave Primrose a disbelieving look, her cheeks turning a faint shade of pink. What? But, but, well, I... I mean... She stuttered, completely and utterly flummoxed by the abrupt question. But after a moment, she lowered her head, took a deep breath and answered it in a low, regretful whisper. We were... once... before the war ended. Are you not anymore? Scarlet was quiet, a conflict starting up in her mind that she had tried so hard to avert by simply not thinking about it. But there it was, a battle raging in full force within her conscious. She lifted a hoof up to her chest and closed her eyes, her ears lowering. I don't know, Primrose. I hope not. Huh? Primrose shifted back slightly, her eyes widening. You don't want to be in love? Is he a bad pony? Scarlet shook her head quickly. No, no, he's wonderful. He's charming, he's optimistic, he's clever, and, well, he's a little scatterbrained. He's easily one of the kindest ponies I've ever met. She denied before realizing how she sounded. She quickly cut herself off and looked down. It would pain me more than anything to hurt some pony so good. And if we're in love, then... Scarlet sighed again and looked out the window, catching sight of the moon dipping towards the horizon in the distance. 
Then saying goodbye will be one of the most painful things I could ever do to him. Primrose stared at Scarlet for a while, seemingly lost in thought. Then, with a gentle smile, she leaned over and rested against the unicorn's side again. Well, I think he probably still likes you like that. She murmured before her mouth stretched wide open in a large and an unattractive yawn. <sighs> he was really happy to see you when we showed up. Scarlet's expression darkened even more. Yes, he was. The two were silent for a while after that, Scarlet trying in vain to calm down the storm that was her thoughts. After a time, though, she slowly slipped off the bed, earning a confused, albeit drowsy, glance from the foal in the room. Scarlet smiled back down at her before putting a hoof on her head. Go ahead and get some sleep, Prim. I have a few more things I need to tell Lens. If you need something, come get us or shout, all right? Primrose allowed herself to fall over so her head thumped into the pillow. In short order, Scarlet had tucked her in and turned out the light. Night, Scarlet. Primrose mumbled from the bed as the unicorn turned to go. Scarlet paused in the doorway and nodded back at her. Good night, Primrose. Sweet dreams. And with that, she stepped out. She closed the door behind her, plunging the room into darkness. <laughs>